crystal cavern. It's beautiful. Immensely wide, unfathomably deep, crossing the chasm would be Jenny's most challenging obstacle yet. Well, at least I'm getting over my fear of heights. like they used to, thankfully. Another brush with death. Another step closer to mom. waded through the thick sludge, each step bringing her closer to her mum and the truth. I hope the truth is less gross and stinky. goes. What? I can't do that. What if he sees me? Stay in the shadows and keep a safe distance. You want me to follow a deranged psycho killer through the haunted graveyard in complete darkness? Yes. You're a lot safer if you know where he is. Okay, Jenny. I'll do it for you. I know you'd do the same for me. I can't believe I'm doing this. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. This machine is really working overtime. Looks like it's ready to blow.
now I can hear myself think. This contraption was curious, and yet somehow familiar. Why does a town as small as Arthurton need such a powerful pumping machine? Another transmitter. These things are everywhere. Jenny paused to reflect. Was there anywhere in Arthurton not under the watch of the Council of Three? Torrents of water poured from the open sewer. To attempt to cross it would be suicide. Somewhere in the distance, Jenny could hear a voice. So familiar, she'd recognize it from a mile away. Mom! I finally found you! Inside the dingy jail cell, Jenny's mother contemplated her predicament, lamenting how little time she had left to make things right. Angry, defeated, alone. Well, almost alone. I will not stand for this! This is a violation of my human rights! Quiet down in there! It's almost 4 a.m. for Pete's sake! 4 a.m. Time was almost up. I will not quiet down, not until my voice has been heard! I'm not gonna keep coming over here. What is it this time? I was promised two cookies with my hot chocolate, and I only got one! What kind of ramshackle operation are you running here? This is not a hotel, CJ. If this is how you treat all your guests, I'm surprised you have any customers at all! The sheriff said you are free to go, just as soon as you stop yelling and throwing stuff around. Now please! I'm trying to finish the crossword! That's right, run away! The service here has really gone downhill. CJ, did he just say you're free to go? Yes, but I'm holding out for breakfast. The bacon is exquisite. I can't believe it's come to this. CJ, I need you to listen to me very carefully. It's a matter of life and death. I can't understand what they're saying. Jenny was so close she could smell it. And boy, does it stink. But to even attempt to free her mum, she would need to find a way across the chasm. There must be something around here I can use to get across. I'm on my way, Mom. An old pipe hung precariously above Jenny's head. I'm going to take a closer look. The gap is too wide to jump across. The pipe is cracked and patched together at both ends. According to my calculations, that pipe is just wide enough to bridge the gap. But how can I knock it down? There's no way to climb up there. And there's nothing around here to throw at it. She only had one option. The explosives. 
but she couldn't use them here. She needed the explosives to free her mother. I can't break into the jail if I can't even reach the jail. Look at this mess. A few instructions wouldn't have hurt Susie. Oh well, I'll work it out. Once the timer was started, there'd be no turning back. What if she missed the target? What if the explosives didn't work? Think positively, Jenny. She'd be stuck, and it would have all been for nothing. Focus, Jenny. You can do this. That doesn't sound good. I better hurry. were silent, but that pipe sure was loud. The plan had worked, but without the explosives, breaking into the jail was practically impossible. And with the man in black approaching, time was running out. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. Your secret will die with me. Is that CJ? What did he do this time? This isn't about keeping a secret, CJ. It's about you following my plan. Precisely. Yes, of course. Would you pass me a roll of toilet paper? I think I can hit that guard from here. Don't get sidetracked. There's no time. No time? For what? Focus, CJ. This is serious. You have to use the whole thing or it won't work. Do you understand? I'm only trying to scare the man. I'll take his head off. CJ, wear the gloves. Don't forget. Shh! Did you hear that? Somebody's listening. CJ, it's me! Ah! They found me! Jenny? Mom! I'm down here! How in heaven's name did you get down there? Did you hear it too? The sewer grate is talking! No, CJ, it's me, Jenny LeClue. Nonsense! I know Jenny personally. She looks nothing like a sewer grate. I'm underneath the floor, you doof. The dogs bark loudest before the dawn. Hey, that's my line! The dogs bark loudest before the dawn. The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. No, oh, are you an imposter? <clears throat> the dogs bark loudest before the dawn. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it cook a five-course meal. The wind blows strongly from the east. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. Don't be ridiculous. The wind blows strongly from the east. A watched pot feels very self-conscious. The evening sky is full of fireflies. But the absent-minded goldfish swims into the blender. Jenny, it is you! What are you doing down there? So much has happened, but there's no time to explain. I'm here to rescue Mom. Don't be ridiculous. You are going home this instant. You don't understand, Mom. Someone's coming to kill you. What? Who? A man dressed in black, carrying a blue umbrella and a briefcase. A shadow man? That's serious. He was in our house, looking for something. And now he's on his way here, to kill you. But I won't let him. I'm breaking you out. Or was she? Steel bars and a foot of concrete separated Jenny from her mother. 
Without Susie's explosives, how could she possibly hope to stage a breakout? And how exactly were you planning on breaking into the jail? I... I'm still working on that part. But one way or another, I'm busting you out. Oh no, you're not, young lady. Not alone. Remember, Jenny, a great detective knows when to accept help. Now, have a look around and tell me what you find down there. That pipe runs directly into the prison cell. It must be connected to something inside. It's a valve. It controls the direction and flow of water through the pipes. valve. They provide very precise control of the water flow. Why does Arthurton need such a complex system of pipes and valves? Why does Arthurton need such a complex system of pipes and valves? This machine is identical to the last. It's very high-tech for Arthurton. I think it pumps water or sewage through all these pipes. Why are there so many? Our town's not that big. There's nothing else down here, except for the pungent soup of Arthurton's collective bowel movement. I should go back and talk to Mom. Okay, I'm back! What did you find? There are pipes everywhere. Connected by lots of valves. Some kind of sewage pumping machine. And a whole bunch of dead rats. What can you see up there? Everything Jenny knew about being a great detective, she'd learned from her mother. Even with so much at stake, Jenny couldn't help but feel a rush of excitement. She was finally working alongside her mum on a real case. Drain cover, securely welded in place. Would require a small explosion to displace. CJ, looking very anxious. Possibly has lice. A metal bed with pillow and sheets. Extremely uncomfortable. Dead rat, in the process of decomposition. Cause of death, poison. Toilet, poorly installed, possibly never cleaned. There's a large crack in the floor around the base. Cell door, reinforced steel frame and bars. Wide enough to fit a hand through, but lock is unreachable. That's everything of interest here. I've got this picture of two monkeys holding hands. I think they're planning something. That's it. I've got it. I knew it was important! I know exactly how to get you out of there. Attempting a breakout without the explosives seemed futile, but Jenny had spotted something else useful. How can I break Mom out of jail? That doesn't quite add up. Let me give this some more thought. That's not what I meant. Let me try that again. The pipe 
leading to the jail is a weak point, and the floor around the toilet is cracked and damaged. By redirecting the flow of water and turning on the pumping machine, we can create an explosion of our own. We need to create enough pressure to blow up that toilet. Yes, of course. Great thinking, Jenny. I'll turn on the machine and use the valves to redirect the water. I'll use the pillow to block the toilet and sustain the pressure. And I'll distract the guard. Okay, we're on the case. Go team! than I imagined. What happened? Nothing happened. We need more pressure. More pressure? How can I get more pressure into the pipe?
yourselves for impact! What the hell was that? Oh! TJ! Sorry, man, my bad. Had a spicy burrito last night. You might want to give it a minute. Quit making a ruckus! This is your last warning! He fell for it! <laughs> well done, CJ. Say another word. I see you've been busy. Dad wasn't working for the university. His accident was a cover up for something much bigger. Jenny? And it's not the first time it's happened. There's an organization running secret operations all over town. Jenny! And Dean Strasbury was working for them, too. Stop. You already know, don't you? So you knew he was still alive, and you didn't tell me? What? Who's still alive? Dad survived the explosion. He's alive. Dad is alive. But they're keeping him prisoner in a room hidden under the graveyard. No, Jenny. He sent us a message. He's trapped. We have to rescue him, together. I'm sorry, Jenny, but you're wrong. But it's true. I used the Dean's ring to make a key for the door. I can explain everything on the way. What? Why do you have the Dean's ring? Well, I uh found it in the library. You stole evidence from a crime scene? Well, yeah, but now's not the time to discuss the ethics of my investigation. Give it to me. Why? Give me the ring. Now. Fine. Take it. Don't you understand? Someone is coming to kill you. Go back the way you came and don't tell anyone that you were here. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, which is precisely why you have to leave. Leave? I'm the reason you're still alive. The whole town thinks you killed the Dean. I'm the only one who believes you didn't. You didn't, right? You shouldn't have come here. Why won't you tell me the truth? What did you talk to the Dean about before he died? And what happened at Widow's Drop? Jenny! The man in black just entered the crypt! Is that Susie Glass? You've got to get out of there, now! Leave, immediately. Find Susie and go home. You put her in terrible danger. A great detective never keeps secrets from her daughter. This is a discussion for another time. I have to go before it's too late. Did you hear me, Jenny? He's coming! Get out of there! We're leaving right now, Susie. Mom, I'm coming with you. No. Promise you won't follow me, Jenny. Drop all this nonsense. Go home and stay out of trouble. Promise me. 
You'd be dead if it weren't for me. If it weren't for you, then none of this would have happened. She was right. Jenny should never have gone to the library that day. If she had simply returned home instead, her mother would never have been caught. If you had just listened to me for once. I was just trying to help. How can you help? You are a child. This isn't a missing baseball card, Jenny. It's not a classroom murder mystery. There are real consequences to your actions. Fine. I don't need you. I got this far on my own. I'll find my own way back. But at least take this. You'll need it. No, you keep it. It's pitch black in the tunnels. You'll be lost without it. There's no time to argue. Please, just let me help you. Kill someone else? I can't do it, can I? Who would it be? I can't bear it. It's too much. First her father and now her mother. How will the poor girl ever recover? All of this could have been avoided if I just stuck to my original formula. There must be a way to fix this. You're right, Rufus. I need some rest. These long writing sessions are starting to take their toll. Mom, you broke my... But Jenny's mother was gone. More confused than ever, Jenny had no choice but to make her way back through the sewer completely alone. Well... Apart from the man coming to kill her, of course. Not helpful. Jenny! You've got to get out of here! The Shadow Men are dangerous, and my boxing skills aren't what they used to be. You were right all along, CJ, about everything. You saw them? The little green men? Okay, maybe not everything. It's never aliens. Until it is! But all the strange phenomena around town? I've seen it too. Good! It's all connected. And my mom knows more than she's letting on. Yes! Trust no one! What did she tell you before I arrived? She asked you to do something for her. What was it? I'll never tell. She swore me to secrecy. Excellent. You passed the test. Did I? Mom told me you would never give her up. That's why she gave me the secret code. Widow's Drop. Ah, so she told you as well? Yes. I've just forgotten some of the details. What did she need us to do? Let's see. It was very important. Life or death. Find Widow's Drop. That was first. Look for the flowers. Use the key. Oh, wear the gloves. Very important. It's a lot to fit in before sunrise. And where is Widow's Drop? Good question. I don't remember. Did she at least give you a sense of which direction she was going? Um, well, 
If I'm north and you're south, then she must have been going, um... It was no good. CJ's memory was jumbled at the best of times. Right now, Jenny needed to evade the man in black and get back to the room where her father was trapped. Stay safe, CJ. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, uh, yes. Goodbye, Jenny. Keep your eyes open. The truth is closer than you think. Now, Mom went that way. But Jenny wouldn't be following her. Damn! by her mother, hunted by a killer, covered in filthy water. Jenny LeCru was most certainly not okay. Just let me focus on not getting brutally murdered. Dr. Benderson says it's always better to get things out in the open. You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Head was shrouded in darkness. I sure wish I still had my flashlight. Was Jenny ready for the next chapter of her adventure? familiar feeling began to ferment in the back of Jenny's mind. Doubt. Why did her mother act so suspiciously? Where did she go in such a hurry? Jenny had expected answers, but now each step forward felt as if the ground were crumbling beneath her feet.
everything's super down here. Just wandering around in total darkness, trying not to get killed. Oh, well if you need some light, there's one on your walkie-talkie. What? Why didn't you tell me that before? You said not to disturb you. Jenny fumbled in the darkness until she found the switch on her walkie-talkie. Jenny stood perilously close to the edge of a deep pit. If Susie hadn't interrupted her when she did... I'm going to have to jump to that minecart. But even if Jenny made the jump, she couldn't be sure it would support her weight. If it was going to fall, it would have done it by now. Steady as a rock. That's enough near-death experiences for one day. Tunnel 13. Unlucky for some. she realized the true scale of the tragedy that had befallen the miners. I'm standing in the world's biggest tomb. And if none of the miners got out, how am I supposed to? Fortunately, Jenny had Susie Glatz. Susie, Susie, come in! Thank goodness! I was worried you dropped your walkie-talkie. The line just went dead. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I need... Her mouth went dry. I need your... How could one word be so difficult to say? I need your... help. Jenny felt a wave of nausea as the words left her mouth. Susie, are you there? <laughs> it would be... An honor to assist you in any way I can, Jenny LeClue. I'm in Tunnel 13. I've reached a dead end. I need you to find me another way out. Of course. Just give me a moment. Found it! You're close to the extraction chamber, where they transfer crystals to the surface for processing. There's bound to be an exit there. But it's a long way up. You're going to have to climb. No problem. Oh, and Susie. Thanks. Extraction chamber. This is definitely it. like something's holding it in place. I don't think I'm going to be able to move it.
it might still work. I was better off in the dark. It's a pulley of some kind. The rope must be attached to something nearby. That was satisfying. But what did it do? Shafts of moonlight shone through cracks in the ceiling. The extraction chamber. That was too close. I better get moving. out of sight, covered on all sides. The minecart was an ideal hiding place. You'll see me if I go that 
way. I'm not crazy. She was confident the man in black wouldn't spot her, but she'd need to remain perfectly still. Even the slightest sound could give her away. of absolute silence. Kitty! I just wanted to say, I think we had a really good breakthrough just now. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I can feel our friendship growing. I know it's a silly thing to say, but... Luck is starting to run out. It won't be long before he reaches the jail and realizes my mom isn't there. And something told her he wouldn't be very pleased. Are you trying to get me killed? Sorry. I just wanted to let you know I'm here for you whenever you need me. That's very nice, Susie. But none of that matters if I'm dead. Don't call me. I'll call you. One big pile of rocks. They must weigh a ton each. The shattered skull of a long-deceased miner looked up at Jenny. Poor guy. That was somebody's dad. He was still alive and no one came to help him. He never got to say goodbye. Jenny knew exactly how that felt. The Council of Three blamed the workers to protect their secret. Jenny folded up the letter and placed it in her pocket. I'll find your family, Samuel, and deliver it to them personally. And I won't rest until the whole town knows the truth. Structurally unsound, just like everything else around here. There are two minecarts, attached together by a system of pulleys. After all these tremors, I'm amazed they're still hanging up there. Fragments of quartz crystal littered the room. They're beautiful. She held one in her hands. It'd be a good souvenir if it wasn't so heavy. was out of reach. Like a well-oiled machine, Jenny the Clue's brilliant mind kicked into gear. A plan had started to form. How can I reach the ladder? Quite add up. Let me give this some more thought. Uh, 
That's not right. Back to the drawing board. I can stand on the minecart to reach the ladder. But first, I need to get it down. And I know exactly how to do it. Minecart is connected to a pulley. When I jumped inside, it lowered, but it didn't reach the floor. First, I'll climb to the top of the rickety scaffolding. Then, I'll jump in the minecart with my pockets full of crystals. The extra weight will carry me all the way to the floor. At the bottom, I'll climb out and push the minecart underneath the ladder. Finally, I'll use the added height to reach the ladder. Then it's a straight shot to freedom. More crystals in my pockets. Hopefully this will be enough. Why didn't that work? Something's holding me back. Another transmitter on Glatt's core property. Susie denied her family's involvement, but I can't imagine they don't know about this. Jenny opened her eyes and rubbed her aching head. Ugh, how long was I out for? Things hadn't quite gone according to plan. I guess my calculations were slightly off. Fortunately, Jenny found herself in a familiar place. This is the tunnel where I first came in! 
Unfortunately, someone else had heard the commotion. Here goes nothing. Welcome back, S32. Access level Z Alpha granted. Disarming blast door 13A. For your safety, please stand clear. Paused. She was finally here. Could it be true? Was her father really on the other side of this door? The man she'd lost forever. She would have given anything to bring him back. What would she say to him? How would she feel when she saw him? Of all the puzzles she'd solved, every obstacle she'd climbed, and every leap of faith she'd made, this was the scariest moment of all. Mom should be here. She needed her. She needed someone. Maybe even Susie. I'm not going to solve anything by just standing here. Arthurton had slowly revealed its secrets to Jenny, and now she faced the final chapter. Gathering her courage... She took a deep breath. This is it, Jenny. And stepped into the darkness once more. echoed in the darkness. <sighs> Another dead end. Of course he's not here. Just another machine. Arthurton. A small town seemingly like any other. Nestled in a valley between two mountains. Lined by lustrous forests. And perched on the edge of a pristine lake. Yes, Arthurton had it all. A main street with shops and a place to sip coffee. Schools, a college, a church and a police station. The kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. But you won't find it anymore. For Arthurton is now... The Town That Disappeared. Where once stood a city bustling with life, now lies an empty crater. How could a town suddenly and completely vanish from the face of the earth? And if it could happen to Arthurton, could it happen to your town too? Scientists are baffled. Church attendance is at a record high. Is this a sign of the end of days? Tonight we attempt to answer the question, What happened to Arthurton? 
The Enigma Report investigation starts now. Jenny stared at the screen, astonished. Arthurton disappeared? It didn't make any sense. But of all the strange things she'd seen, one stood out more than the others. There was something at the end of the tape. Zazer, need help? For Jenny LeClue? her tears. She had lost count of the number of times she'd almost died today, and it was starting to take its toll. Let's get out of here before he wakes up! No, wait! Keith, this could be the man who killed your father. We should really go. This could be our only chance to find out who he is. It won't matter if we're buried alive. Don't you want to know? It doesn't matter. What? Look! Damn it! Let's get out of here. That's what I've been saying! The truth is no good if we're dead. I said that, too! It doesn't matter who said what! Let's go already!
three intrepid adventurers made their escape across the graveyard on the far side of town. Behind the twin peaks of Arthurton, the sun began to rise, but this night had not yet ended. Beneath them, the ground shook and grumbled. Deep in the bowels of Arthurton, something stirred. Jenny recounted the thrilling story of her entire adventure. She told Susie and Keith about Professor Zaza and his experiments, the truth behind the tragic accident in the mines, and how she discovered that her father was alive. But she left out one critical detail. The town that disappeared. How would they react to such an unfathomable revelation? Would they even believe her? She wasn't sure she believed it herself. What an incredible adventure! Although, I think the greatest discovery today has been our friendship. You never stop, do you? All these trials have really brought us together. And now that you and Keith are friends again, we can form our very own mystery solving club. It's just a shame we didn't unmask the man in black. So what's our next step, fearless leader? There's something about this case that still doesn't add up. I need to find my mom before the cops do. But she could be anywhere. No, she's gone to Widow's Drop. Where? Widow's Drop. But I have no idea where that is. It's certainly not on any map I've seen. That's because it's not a place. What? Yeah. It's a plant. My dad has had a... Uh, he grew one in his greenhouse. He had to separate it from all the other plants. They all started to shrivel up. Have you ever felt a flash of pure inspiration? The sudden feeling of everything falling into place. It's the moment a great detective lives for. you take out the trash? What? What day does the garbage man come? Uh, oh, uh, um, Friday? Why? Of course! It was right there the whole time! Jenny! I know where my mom is! Jenny! And I know who killed Dean Strasberry. told me I'd find three unruly kids out after curfew. Oh no! Damn. Stealing, breaking and entering, destruction of property. You're all in a heap of trouble. Jenny, can't say I'm surprised to find you here. But Keith, Susie, I expected more from you. Sheriff, this is Station. Are you there? Go ahead, Station. Susie, Keith, I need you to create a distraction. What? There's no time to explain. Where are you going? You'll just have to trust me. Okay. No. Susie, please. No, not unless you say it. Say what? After everything we've been through, you know it's true. What are you talking about? Now is hardly the time for this. You told me to stand up for myself, so that's what I'm doing. Hold on a second. Enough chatter. Get your sorry butts over here now! We depend on each other. Admit it, Jenny. Come on, Jenny. It's not a big deal. Just say it. This is your last warning! I am not gonna tell you again. A 
of all the challenges our tiny hero had faced, this was perhaps her toughest. You aren't alone, Jenny LeClue. I don't need to pretend anymore. As hard as it was to say it, Jenny knew deep in her heart it was true. Fine. Susie, Glatz, you are my friend. Thank you, friend. Now, let's get you out of here. Yeah, I've got him. Safe and sound. I'm bringing him in now. What the? Sorry, Mr. LeClue. Hello? Do you have them or not? I thought I did. Where did she go? to hear your voice. I was having the strangest dreams. What's wrong? I almost didn't make it. But you did. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. Surprised to see me? I am only a child, after all. What is she... How did you... It was really quite simple. Once I realized Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die... was unusually disorganized. Something was weighing on his mind. In his planner, he had canceled his meetings on Friday and rearranged a lunch date with Keith. At the time, this didn't strike me as unusual. Once I considered the possibility that Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die on Thursday, everything started to fall into place. But consider this. If someone knew they were going to die, wouldn't they do everything in their power to escape their fate? And yet, the Dean didn't. 
there was only one explanation. He staged his own death. People might not know he authored a book about exotic plants and their natural remedies. You knew how you were going to die, Mr. Strasbury. Poison. You knew because you made it yourself from one of your plants. A poison that you had an antidote for. That would be the method, but you couldn't work alone. You needed an accomplice. Someone to revive you when the time was right. old dusty desk, I found a recently used vial. The residue was purple, the same color as the marks on the Dean's neck. In the jail, Mom knew she was running out of time, so she entrusted CJ to finish what she had started. To revive the Dean from his deathly slumber. You plotted together to stage Mr. Strasbury's death. It was a simple scheme. Poison him with the plant, then return after the funeral to revive him. You had intended the death to appear natural, but not everything went according to plan. After the poison was administered, the Dean intended to give Mom his ring. But he accidentally dropped it, and it got stuck in the electrified track of the ladder. When he bent down to retrieve it, he was electrocuted and thrown from the balcony. The Dean instinctively reached out for something to stop himself from falling, but all he managed to grab was the ID card hanging around Mom's neck. Once she realized it was gone, she returned to collect it, but I had already found it. Even the smartest criminals make mistakes. Getting caught hadn't been part of the plan. <laughs> Quite remarkable, Jenny. And you worked out all that by yourself? Yes, that's how you did it. But the real question is why? Well, that's all a bit more complicated, I'm afraid. It was a rhetorical question, Mr. Strasbury. I know why you're working together. But first, I have to tell you about aliens. Oh, this is exciting. What an incredible adventure this turned out to be. Jenny's growing up and discovering her full potential. And to think, I did it all without anybody dying. Hello? Richard! Oh, what do you think of the new scenes? Aren't they wonderful? I beg your pardon? Trick you? Certainly not. But don't you see? It all works out perfectly this way. I can already picture where the next book will start. You're not serious. But... I didn't promise anything. But... There must be another way. Just give me more time. Cancelled? Richard, please. 
Richard? Hello? Hello? It's no good. They won't publish it unless someone dies. But I can't do it. I just can't. Come on, Arthur. Jenny's whole world hangs in the balance. Decades of work. It can't all end now. Oh, I have to. It's like Jenny's mum always says. A great detective knows the right decision is often the hardest to make. And I am a great author of detective stories. But I can't pick. What should I do, Rufus? Brilliant! Yes! You're always right, old friend. I'll let fate decide. Here goes. has spoken, but is she certain? Once the choice is made, there's no turning back. Jenny wasn't an option, was she? Oh, Rufus, I think I need to lie down. <clears throat> As I was saying... What was that? No more interruptions! The tremors were getting more violent and more frequent. Please! I'm in the middle of my astonishing denouement! Everyone in town thinks CJ is crazy. A madman spouting wild theories about aliens and hidden forces at work in Arthurton. But all the strange phenomena he's seen are real. And the culprits are men, not monsters. on top of some kind of energy source. Something special. My suspicions were first raised when I heard a strange radio broadcast by the lake. Later, I heard the same message in a room hidden beneath the forgotten forest. I uncovered the secret laboratories of Professor Zazer. He ran experiments to study the unique properties of Arthurton's resource. And his research was funded by a shady organization called the Council of Three. I don't fully understand it, but something happened to the whole town. And wherever we were, we aren't there anymore. The rest of the world think we disappeared. At first, I thought I was solving two separate mysteries. But then it hit me like a ton of used books. The two were inextricably linked. And that's how I know your motive for staging the Dean's death. on Caesar's machines, all under the watchful eye of the Council of Three. The Dean is part of the Council of Three, 
Or at least he works for them. Through her own investigation, Mom concluded that Dad had died under suspicious circumstances. She confronted the Dean. Racked with guilt, he confessed and begged for her forgiveness. Instead of letting anger cloud her judgment, Mom saw an opportunity. And together, you concocted a plan to bring down the organization from the inside. Oh, what a brilliant mind you have, Jenny LeClue. Julie, I believe you underestimated this girl. You could have gotten yourself killed. But I didn't. But what if you had? I'm not a kid anymore. I have to make my own choices. A flower cannot blossom without light. Jenny had risked everything to save her mom. I... I'm sorry, Jenny. It's okay, Mom. You were running out of time to save Mr. Strasberry. I was trying to protect you. I know. <sighs> I should have trusted you. But you were wrong. I just apologized. No, not about that. Everyone presumed Dad died in the lab explosion. So did I, until today. But then, I started finding secret messages all over town. They led me to a secret room under the graveyard. And there, on a small television, I saw him. Henry? Dad is alive! But he's trapped on the other side, and he's been trying to contact us this whole time. He made it back? Then the experiment worked! Exactly! But if he made it back, that means... We can all get back! We need to get to the machine, right away! No! First, we need to find Professor Zazer. 